Well, very good morning uh, to you all this morning. Welcome uh, to this live uh, web broadcast from Sandown Free Presbyterian Church. I want to read before we start this morning from the book of Psalms and Psalm number 46. I trust as you gather around your phone, your laptop, your computer, that you will gather with us this morning as we seek to worship God uh, around his word. So grab your Bible, if you haven't already done so, and let's read together from Psalm number 46. Psalm number 46. And we read there, God is our refuge and strength, and a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar, and be troubled, and though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved, God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge Selah. Come behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease on to the end of the earth. He, he breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. And the God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Let's just have a word of prayer together. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes as we commit our time now to the Lord. Eternal God, our Father, we thank thee this morning that we can say God is our refuge and strength. And that he is a very present help in time of trouble. Our Father, we pray this morning as, Lord, we, Lord, we conduct this service. Lord, as we consider the Word of God, our Lord, help us to heed what we have read. Help us to be still and help us to know that Thou art God in the midst of all that's going on around us, in the midst of all the crisis and calamity that has befallen us as a province, as a nation, and yet as a world. Help us, O God, we pray, that today, for this time, we might be still and know that Thou art God. Bless us, we pray, bless each one who's watching, each one who's listening. Lord, thrill our hearts, encourage us, we pray. In the Saviour's name we ask. Amen. Amen. Well, as I've said, a very good morning uh, to you all. You're very, very welcome along. Uh, to this live webcast here from Sandown Free Presbyterian Church. Things are very different this morning, aren't they? And I must admit, it's very unusual to be speaking to an empty church. But the very difficult decision was made that our church had to close for public gatherings in order to try to stem the spread of this awful virus, which is much worse than any of us thought it would be. And while that was difficult, yet it was the right thing and the Christian thing to do. However, today we are thankful for the modern means of communication that make it possible for you to join with us today via Sermon Audio or else via Facebook Live. Do you know, I was thinking last night that perhaps more than any other time before, the internet today, this Lord's Day, is being flooded by the word of God in a way it has never known before. And surely we can rejoice in that. Our ministry for the next while will certainly be focused on the internet, on social media, on email, on WhatsApp, texts, etc. as well. And again, we're thankful for this means of communication with you. If you want to receive the emails, the texts, the updates, whatever, then I would encourage you to get in contact with us through email, my email address is garth, G-A-R-T-H, at sandownfpc.org. 
org. That's Garth, G-A-R-T-H, at sandownfpc.org. Or, or through Facebook Messenger, send us a message and we will reply to you. Or my uh, contact number is 07899-955-255. You'll understand that we, like everyone else, are very much learning and adapting to this ever-changing situation all the time. And so as time goes on, We'll be doing different things, looking at other ways to help out, and most importantly, get the word out while you're not able to come and meet with us here publicly. So I encourage you, please, keep with us, stay with us through all the various channels. We'll, we'll keep you updated as to how the ministry adapts and uh, work with us all in this, we ask. This morning, we thank you for uh, joining with us from wherever you are, near or far, Maybe this is the first time that you've joined with us. You're so welcome and thank you. Please bear with us. As we've said, this will take a bit of time with adjusting. I'm not called to be a professional performer in front of a camera, but rather to pastor you through the preaching of the Word of God. So I'll seek to bring God's Word week after week as the Lord gives help. Can I just say as well, and as far as the pastoral work is concerned, while that obviously is limited and restricted in many ways, I want you to know that I'm still available for whatever pastoral help and assistance I can be for you and to you. And again, I encourage you, please do get in contact with us. If it's only for a chat, just to talk with someone, then as always, I'm more than happy to do that. I would also encourage you at this time, keep in contact with others. Keep in regular contact. I would encourage you to, to phone people. It's nice to text and whatever, but why not lift the phone and ring a number of people as well on, on a regular basis. Here in our congregation in Sandby, we've set up a friendship, friendship circle whereby particularly our elderly congregation will be contacted by telephone on a regular basis, not just by me, but by others in the congregation who have volunteered to help in this way. And I think that's important, uh, that phone contact is kept up with each other uh, at this time. Uh, but can I encourage you, whatever you do, whatever trouble or problem you may be going through, do not suffer in silence. Speak with someone, speak with others. If anyone needs any help practically in getting groceries picked up or getting medication perhaps lifted, then please again let us know. We're only too happy uh, to do that uh, for you. Also, I encourage you as well, as you can, while many will be uh, shut up in their own homes and, and isolated, I would encourage you when, when you can and as you can, just even step out your back door or your front door uh, for a period of time. Get fresh air and try if you can to, to do that and obviously not gathering in, in large gatherings and keeping a safe distance from from others as well while you're away from uh, church here if you want to keep up your weekly tithes and offerings then there are ways that that can be done as well either by standing order uh, bank transfer or by post uh, kyle hamilton our church treasurer will be more than happy to facilitate you in, in this so again please do get in touch most importantly keep reading your bible keep praying keep the times with the family keep close to the lord in all of this we'll have our service tonight again here live at half past six and also on thursday evening at eight o'clock our discipleship course will continue through facebook live and we'll be looking on Thursday night at the subject of the character of God and learning more about the God that we serve. And I would encourage you to join with us again uh, tonight at 6.30 and also on Thursday night at 8 o'clock. And also I know that our Sunday school workers and teachers are putting together packs and teaching material for our uh, Sunday school children. I'm putting together material for our young people that will be sent out so that our, our children and our young people will continue to be taught God's word as well. So there's plenty uh, still going on, albeit in a very different format. What I want to do just now is to 
come to the Lord again in prayer. We want to very specifically pray just now. We want to pray specifically for those who are sick with this virus. We want to pray for God's healing upon them. We want to pray for those who've lost loved ones as a result of this. We want to pray for God's comfort to be with them. We want to pray for our families that we through it all will be kept safe. We want to pray for those who've lost their jobs Others and their business is in trouble, their, their future is very uncertain. We need to pray for them. We need to pray for our government. That God would grant them wisdom. And that God would lead them, direct them as to how they give leadership in our nation at this time. I want to pray for those who are feeling overwhelmed, struggling to come to terms with, with all of this. Pray that their minds will be kept strong and focused on, on the Lord. And pray that God would use this to turn many to himself. That many would see in this world there's nothing that's certain. Everything changes. And how that we need to have our faith, a saving faith in our unchanging God. That's the only thing that matters. And that even through this awful crisis that many souls will be saved, many lives will be rescued from the fear the bondage of sin. Most particularly, we want to pray for our medical workers, our care workers, our nurses, our district nurses, our GPs, our doctors. In our own congregation, we want to pray very specifically for a few of our own church members here in, in Sandown who are involved in the medical field. We want to pray for Sophie, Sophie Miller, as she nurses through this in one of our local hospitals. We also want to pray for Jamie, Jamie McCune, a district nurse who will continue to fulfill her duties and responsibilities and care for those in need. We want to pray as well for Judith, Judith McGill, who is a doctor, member of our congregation here, is a doctor in one of the local hospitals. All of these people working on the front line of this battle against this coronavirus. They need our prayers. Their colleagues need our prayers as well. All the medical staff need our prayers. We want to pray that God would step in and that God would stem this. God would remove this. He's able. And that he would do that for his glory and for his honour. Let's make this day a day of worship, but let's also make it a day of earnest Prayer. Let's pray. Eternal God and our Father, we come again to Thee. And Lord, we pray very specifically today for those who have been afflicted by this virus. We ask, O oh God, you'll touch them in their bodies, strengthen them, heal them. O oh God, we pray. And Lord, we remember those who have lost loved ones as a result of this. We pray for God's comfort. That in the midst of all their grief and sorrow, May they find the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father and our God, this morning we want to pray for those who are facing very difficult and uncertain economic times. Those who've lost their jobs. Or those whose perhaps businesses, Lord, are, are crumbling under all of this. Local businesses. Well, Heavenly Father, we pray that you'll, you'll grant them, Lord, meaning and direction. And Lord, just give that economic help, that financial help that they need as well. Pray for our government. We ask, O oh God, you'll remember our Prime Minister and those who, who lead our nation at this time. Grant them wisdom. Wisdom they've never needed before. Grant them help, O oh God, we pray. Remember all those who are feeling so overwhelmed by all of this. Lord, just go alongside. May they know that underneath are the everlasting arms of the Saviour. We pray for our medical staff. We pray, Lord, for all those who are dealing with this awful virus on the front line, coming in contact with those who have been afflicted. We pray, Lord, you'll keep them safe. We pray, Lord, for those in our own congregation, those of our care workers, those of our 
medical staff, Lord, that you'll keep them safe, protect them, oh God. We pray for Sophie. We pray for Jimmy. Oh God, we pray for Judith today. Remember them as they continue on their tasks. Bless them. Give them wisdom. And help me, Father, keep your hand upon them for good. And bless their families. Protect their families from, from this as well. We pray for all of our families. Oh God, protect us from all of this, we pray. And help me, Father, we acknowledge that in all of thy ways, Lord, the ways of God are past finding out. We cannot understand. But Lord, we thank thee today that our faith, our trust is in a sovereign God. Lord, we look to thee. Grant thy peace. Lord, in the midst of all the panic that there is, may we know that peace, the pass of all understanding. We ask, O oh God, that in the midst of all the fear, may we know what it is, and may we take this time as an opportunity to strengthen our faith more and more in our great God. Bless us, we pray. Help us, O oh God, as we continue on. In the Saviour's name we ask. Amen. Amen. This, of course, is, is Mother's Day, and so I want to say to all the mothers who are listening out there, a very happy uh, Mother's Day to you. Thank you for all that you do. Uh, we appreciate all that you do for us, to my own mum, uh, to my granny, to Rachel's mum, and to all the mothers in the congregation and further afield. We wish you a very happy uh, Mother's Day. Thank you for the care and the love and the attention that you give to uh, your families at this time. Uh, where would we be uh, without our mummies? Thank you in the Saviour's name. Now I don't want to forget about the, the children. I don't want to forget about the, the wee people. So I want to speak very especially just for a minute uh, to the children and to the Young people, and what I want you to do, children, what I want you to do, young people, is gather them right close to the screen, will you? As close as you can, because I want to speak to you just for a wee moment uh, today about some birds. Birds. I don't know if you like birds, or maybe you're a bit of a bird watcher, or, or whatever, I'm not sure. Uh, I know in our house, we don't really like birds all that very much. If a bird ever lands within about 10 foot of anybody in our house, they're screaming and all the rest of it. We let you into a wee secret here, and I know you won't tell anybody, so you won't. Uh, but <clears throat> we were on holidays a few years ago in the, the Lake District, and uh, we'd been on a boat trip on Lake Windermere, and we got off the boat, and uh, we thought we'd go and get a bag of chips, or a poke of chips, and it was in a cone. And so we thought we'll, we'll get the chips, and we'll, we'll go and sit back down at the lake again on the seats. And uh, we were enjoying our, our chips, and our fishing, and all of a sudden this big flock of geese started coming and swans started coming uh, toward us. Uh, and Rachel, that was my wife, she, she turned to me and she says, Gareth, what are we going to do? And I said, well, I'm just going to sit and eat my chips here. What should we do? And she says, I don't know about you, but I'm going to run. Well, they ran, Kirsten ran, Leah ran, Isaac wasn't about at that time, and if he had been there, he would have ran too. Uh, but whenever they ran, all the swans ran as well. That meant I could eat my chips in peace and uh, I didn't have to have people coming and uh, or birds coming and stealing my chips. So we're not really all that fond of birds in our house but I want to speak this morning just for a wee moment about some birds that we find in the Bible because they teach us a lesson. And I want to speak first of all about uh, this bird. <clears throat> Hope you can see it. Uh, this bird, it's the, it's the raven. Uh, you'll see that its colour is, what colour is it? That's right, colour is black. It's black. And the raven reminds us about something that we all have. The blackness reminds us of sin. We read in the book of Isaiah, chapter 64 and the verse 6. Look what it says, but we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. You see, the colour black of the raven reminds us of our sin. We're all born in sin. It's that thing that makes us do those bad things. And God sees our sin. And when we think of the raven, it 
reminds us, boys and girls, of God's warning to us that, that we're born in sin. It's not a very pleasant thought, I know. But not only do we think of the raven today, I want you to think about of another bird. It's this one here. It's the turtle dove. Now, I don't think there are too many turtle doves uh, around us at the minute, or too close to us. There's not that very many of them, but the turtle dove reminds us of something else. The raven, it reminded us of God's warning to us. It reminded us and it warned us that we're sinners. But the turtle dove reminds us of God's work for us because, you see, in the Bible, for people to have their sins forgiven, they had to sacrifice. They had to offer a sacrifice. And one of the things, one of the animals that were being sacrificed was a, a turtle dove. And the high priest would have taken it and offered it to the Lord as a, as a sacrifice. Of course, that sacrifice couldn't take away sin. But it pointed and it spoke to the one who could take away sin. Because in 1 John chapter 1 and the verse 7, will you read this with me? As I read it, will you read it as well? It says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. You see, the turtle dove was a substitute. You know when you're in football, um, maybe you get injured or maybe you're too tired and the manager wants you to come off and he'll put someone on in your place. The turtle dove was the substitute, the place, took the place of the person. And you know, Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour, took our place on Calvary. He died. To wash us from our sin. He died to save us. It's always a sign of peace, a sign of sacrifice. I wonder, boys and girls, young people, and older people as well, are you saved? You realize that Jesus Christ loved you and died on the cross to save you. Let me think of this another word. The raven reminds us of God's warning to us, we're sinners. The turtle dove reminds us of God's work for us, that he sent his son to die on the cross of Calvary to save us from our sin. But then there's another wee bird. It's the sparrow. There's lots of sparrows about, aren't there? And the sparrow reminds us of God's watchfulness over us. It reminds us that God cares for us. Do you know in the midst of all that's going on at the minute, God still loves you. God still cares for you. He still provide for you and he'll watch over you. Whenever you're worried and you're fearful, you're, you're, you're concerned, you can pray to God. You can ask God to help you because as we read in Matthew chapter 10, in verse 31 at the very end it says, Fear ye not therefore, ye are more value than, the, than many sparrows. God is interested in the sparrows. He, he sees them even fall into the ground. There's not one bird that falls to the ground that he doesn't know about. And then he says, but you're more value. You're worth more than, than the sparrows. He loves you. And he cares for you. And boys and girls, there's still a God who loves you. Still a God who cares for you. Still a God who will wait your need. And still a God that you can pray to every day. Whenever you become worried, you can just ask God to help you. And so the sparrow reminds us of God's watchfulness over us. You know, there's a, a lovely wee chorus that sometimes we sing. It says, God sees the little sparrow fall. It meets his tender view. You have God so loves the little birds. I know he loves me too. He loves me too. He loves me too. I know he loves me too. Because he loves the little things. I know he loves me too. And boys and girls, the Lord does love you. And the Lord's interested in you. And don't forget all of that. When you're away from your friends now at school and you shut in and, and all that, that brings with that, remember there's still a God who loves you. The raven reminds us that God is warning us we're sinners. Turtle dove reminds us of God's work for us. Christ died for our sin. And this sparrow reminds us of God's watchfulness over us, his care. And then finally there is the eagle. That's God's wish for us. 
God's wish for us. Your eagle is that bird that soars away up high, goes away where, where no other bird would ever fly. In Isaiah chapter 40 and the verse 31, we read, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And God wants you, young people, if you're saved, God wants you to soar through all of these problems and difficulties that are all around us. God wants us to grow in our Christian life. God wants us to be strong in our living for him. We can experience God in an even greater way through all of this than we've ever known before. So whenever you think of the birds, young people, remember, remember the, the raven. Reminds us of God's warning because we're sinners. And then there's the turtle of it, reminds us of God's work for us, Christ died. And then there's the sparrow, reminds us of God's watchfulness. God cares for you. God's going to look after you. God's going to guide you and be with you. He's not going to leave you. And then there's the eagle. It's God's wish for us that we would soar even through all that's going on at the moment. That we would continue all living for God in whatever way we can. May the Lord bless these few thoughts to our hearts. We're going to come again now to the Word of God. And again, I would encourage you, please, uh, take your Bible, and I would ask you to turn with me again to the book of Psalms, in Psalm 91. <clears throat> so I hope you can all hear me okay, and you can all see me okay. Uh, but this morning I want to start uh, a series of studies on these Sunday mornings over this next week by in Psalm 91. And I've entitled this psalm, A Psalm for Perilous Times. A Psalm for Perilous Times. And I want to speak this morning for just the time that's left on the subject of the secret place. The secret place. But anyway, let's read Psalm 91. So I hope you've got your Bible. Get it open and read from Psalm 91. And let's read it together. And it'd be good even uh, as a family. Those who are gathered around the computer or the phone or the laptop or whatever, you read it together. You read it with me. So as I read, you read as well. Read it out loud. Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, for, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon thee, Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. And I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. That's just a wee word of prayer again. Heavenly Father, we pray that as we come to look at thy word just now, we pray, O oh God, that for all who are listening and watching, Lord, that you'll speak to all of our hearts. Lord, while we may be separated from one from the other, my Heavenly Father, we pray that you'll just help us to hear the word of God. Just be with us, we pray. Lead us, guide us, instruct us. 
speak to every heart. In the Savior's name we pray. Amen. Do as you said in your home this morning and as you watch this live broadcast, I'm sure there are many thoughts that are going through your mind. Many worries, many anxieties, many fears about the future, about your family, maybe about your job, about your business, about yourself. These are certainly perilous times that, that, that none of us ever lived through. Days that we thought would never come. Yesterday, we put up a poster at the front of our church and on the notice board that normally displays all the services of our congregation. And we replaced that with another poster that simply said this, all services cancelled. And it directed those who passed by to the internet links where they could join with us today and on Thursdays as well, just as you are. These are very strange and difficult times. But as I speak to you this morning, to use my congregation, a congregation that I love, I hold deeply in my heart, to you who would normally be sitting in front of me, worshipping with me, and to all others who are joining with us today in this live broadcast, we're, we're so glad to have you. And thank you for being a part of this service. But I want today and over the next number of weeks in the will of the Lord to, to bring comfort, to bring strength and to bring help. To your pastor, to your minister, to your friend, I want to reach out to you today with God's word. Because it's the word of God. That alone will bring comfort to our hearts in these perilous times. And this morning I want us to start off by looking at Psalm 91. As I've said, this psalm I've entitled the psalm for, for perilous times. Because I know there are many who are fearful. Many who are anxious. Many who are worried. But in these studies I want us to take great heart. From what I believe God would have to say to us in these days that are on precedent. Now before I get into this message... I'm I'm going to set us all a challenge, all right? First of all, I'm going to challenge you all today to read Psalm 91 every day. Along with your normal Bible readings, read Psalm 91 as well every day. Will you do that? Good. It'll bless your heart. But I'm going to set you another challenge. And I'm going to challenge you not only to read Psalm 91, I'm going to challenge you, and I've challenged myself, to learn Psalm 91 off by heart. Learn a verse every day. 16 verses, 16 days. And by that, we can store the Word of God up in our hearts. So read it, learn it, and repeat it. And take these days of isolation to learn more of the Word of God. So let's see who's up for this challenge. Read the Psalm every day. But also learn the psalm. Take a verse a day and learn this psalm. That even after those 16 days or however long it takes, that you'll be able to repeat the psalm without even having to look up your Bible. And what a blessing that will be. Now there's no clear title or author to the psalm, although many would say that if the writer's name is not given in the title, then you can conclude that the writer is the same author as the previous psalm. In which case that would be Moses, because Moses penned Psalm number 90. This psalm really is a psalm expressing confidence and faith in God. You know, it's almost as if the psalmist is speaking to himself. And here he's telling himself, he's, he's reminding himself of what he needs to do. It's obviously a very difficult time in his life, but, but he's reminding himself what he needs to do in that time of difficulty. It's a call to trust in the Lord. In the midst of all that's going on, is a call to, to place total dependence and confidence in him. You see, what's in view here is the psalmist calmly yet confidently resting in the sovereignty of God. Whatever is happening in his life right now, God has planned some purpose for it and some good will come out of it. And that's what we've got to believe. That's what we've got to trust. That in all of this that's going on in our world, Good will come out of it. God has planned it so. When we don't understand it, we can't see. The great London preacher, Mr. Spurgeon, 
talking about the sovereign day of God. He says, when you go through a trial, the sovereign day of God is the pillow upon which you lay your head. The sovereign day of God is the pillow upon which you lay your head. The coronavirus and the illness, COVID-19, that comes as a result of it, and the effects of it nationally and globally are all parallel. And I can't tell you or I can't explain why schools are closed, why shops and restrooms are shut, why churches are having to close their doors. I can't explain it. I can't explain why so many are sick and unwell with this virus, and, and many of God's people as well. But in it, there's the hand of God. There's the finger of God. One who's appointed all things. And here I believe is a word from God in the midst of all of this in Psalm 91. Because Psalm 91 is a pillow psalm. It's a cushion psalm. It's a psalm that you can rest your head upon. No matter what's going on around. Resting in the plan and the purposes and the providences of God. And so as we conclude our service this morning, I just want to leave some thoughts with you just from this opening verse. The secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Notice the character in this place. He. He. This is the one who enjoys the safe surrounding and the safe environment. This character, this individual, is a very particular person. It's not a general he. It's not just anybody. As you read through the psalm, you'll see that the psalmist is claiming certain privileges, certain rights that are his. In verse number two, he claims the protection of God, the refuge of God. And in verse number three, he claims the refuge of God, and the deliverance that God gives and the protection that God gives. In verse number four, he talks about the tenderness of God. And so in the psalm, you'll see he's, he's given a very special relationship. Because this he that was referred to in Psalm 91 is a very particular person. You'll see that he refers to God and he claims God as my God. My fortress. My refuge. You see here the psalmist claims a, a relationship, a personal relationship with God as his heavenly father. And of course that relationship comes about only through redemption. We're all made by God. God is our creator in that general sense. He is the father over all, but there's a very particular relationship spoken of here in verse 1. He, he, that one who is in that covenant bond with God through Christ. One who enjoys all the blessings of God's salvation and his provision. One who's saved. The one whose sins are washed. One who's redeemed. You see, this protection and this happiness, this deliverance that God provides and we'll go on to look at is not the common lot of all people. That we believe in common grace, the goodness of God to all of his creation. The blessing of God in a, in a general sense. But in this psalm here, there's very clearly in view special grace, saving grace. Grace that is bestowed upon those who have trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior. I wonder today if you that relationship with God through Christ. I wonder today are you saved? In the midst of all of this crisis, where do you turn? Where do you get your strength from? May God even use this pandemic to, to speak to your heart and, and to bring you to himself and salvation because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. We're facing death day after day. How will you face death? How will you meet God? Do you know Christ is your saviour? Is it well with your soul? Well, I pray that even today you'd come to Christ. You accept him into your heart. You would turn away from your sin and by faith you receive him. That he would save you. And that then you can go on and enjoy this protection and this peace. No matter what is happening. But for each one that's saved today, this is a psalm for us. This is a psalm for you.
There's not only the character in this place, but there's also the continuing in this place. Verse number one talks about dwelleth or dwelling. It talks about one who, who sits down, one who stays, one who abides in that same place, in that sacred place. Not going in, not coming out, but just continuing there. It conjures up the idea of experiencing all the blessing and, and all the satisfaction of a particular place and, and not wanting to leave that place. I'm sure you've been to many different places in your lifetime. And maybe there's one particular place that has really stood out for you. It's been a, such a place of beauty, perhaps a place of peace, and you've enjoyed it so much you don't want to leave it. That's very much what the psalmist is speaking here when he says, He that dwelleth, he that stays in that place, he loves being there. He's had the blessed experience of God in the past, and now he's going to claim it again in the present. In the midst of all the storms that's raging around, and the gales that are blowing about, in this place there is security, and there is serenity, and there is safety. And he doesn't want to go anywhere else. I do believe that God, through all that's happening right now across our nation, and across our world, God's taken away from his people, from his church, so many things that we, we think are important. So many things that have stopped us, that have hindered us from, from dwelling, staying, abiding in the sacred place alone with God. God's removing all of those things to remind us today what's really important. That all we need is Him. All we need is Christ. All I have is Christ. What want I more? The problem we think is that we think we need more than Christ. We think we need more than the Lord. But the Lord, I believe, is removing all those other props that we have in our life and reminding us all we need is Him. You listen to me today as you watch today as we go through these next number of weeks and months difficult though they will be we need God and we need to stay close to God like never before Job was a man who had everything yet God took everything away from him his family his farm his health Took it all away to remind Job that all he needed was the Lord. And at the end of his testing, Job was able to come and say, I understood not. He didn't understand why his family were taken away from him. He didn't understand why his health was plagued with illness and sickness. He didn't understand why his whole farm and finances were removed. He didn't understand it. But he was able to come at the end of it all, come through it all, and say, things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Oh, that we would learn more to dwell close to God, not just sometimes, but all the time. Because as we do so, all the cares of this world will fade away, and the storms of this life will lose their force and their fierceness. May we realize today that the Lord's all we need. The hymn writer said things that once were wild alarms cannot now disturb my rest, closed in everlasting arms, pillowed on the loving breast, oh, to lie forever here. Doubt and care and self resign while he whispers in my ear, I am his. He is mine. Dwelling close to God, even in the midst of the crisis. There is the communion as well in this place. The words are very clear in this verse because it speaks very powerfully and plainly of communion with God, of fellowship with God. It speaks of a closeness and a fullness. It speaks of the psalmist being face to face with God. That place of intimate and immediate fellowship with the Lord. The Lord, you see, is not only his habitation, he is also in communication with the Lord. You see, the more we make God our habitation, the more 
the more we dwell close to God, then the more we will want to be and will be in communion with God. If you take your Bible with me, please, and turn back to the Old Testament. The Old Testament in the book of Exodus, chapter 33. Turn with me, please, if you will. Exodus, chapter 33. And in Exodus, chapter 33, we read of the journey to the children of Israel through the wilderness. We read of Moses taking the tabernacle and putting in a place. We read of Moses entering the tabernacle in that place where, where God was pleased to dwell. And if you find Exodus, chapter 33, in the verse... Number 9, read it with me please. Exodus chapter 33 and the verse 9. And it says, It came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle. Notice those words. The cloudy pillar descended, that significance of the presence of God, and stood at the door of the temple, and the Lord talked with Moses. As Moses went in to dwell in the presence of God, in that secret place, and in that secret place, God talked with him. Look at verse number 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. As a man speaketh unto his friend. What communion. What fellowship in that sacred place. Alone with God. These days of self-isolation and social distancing may be hard days. But may they be times when we draw closer than ever before to God. May they be times when we hear God speak to us like never before. The sacred place is the speaking place. And I trust that already this day, this Lord's day, do you spend time in that sacred place with God? Don't waste this God-given time. Use it. Draw from strength that alone God can give. As, as we already saw through the eagle, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Oh, that today we would spend this time in that sacred place hearing God speak to us. There's also the confinement of this place. It is described back there in Psalm 91. If you turn back with me, please, to Psalm 91 and the verse number one. It's described as the secret place. It was a place that was confined. Now, it's not secret in that it was hidden, but it was secret in that it was a place of refuge, away from all the cares of the world. In Psalm 83, and the verse 3, if you turn back with me there, please, to Psalm 83, and the verse 3, we read there that they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Speaking about the ungodly, the enemies of the people of God, but is that term, that lovely term in verse 3, the hidden ones, God's hidden ones? We are hiding in Christ. You see, in Psalm 83, God was pouring out his furious wrath upon the world. But we who are hidden in Christ, we who are in that confined place, hidden in the palm, sheltered in the hands of God, then that wrath doesn't be poured out upon us. Psalm 31 in the verse 20 speaks about the secret of his presence. It speaks about being alone with God. Matthew chapter 6 in the verse 6, it talks about when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, closet. When thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. This secret place with a place of confinement. We'll use the term that is now in everyday vocabulary, it was a place of self-isolation. A place apart from everything else. We're being told quite rightly to protect ourselves, to protect our families, to protect our health service, to protect our elderly, to protect each other, that we must self-isolate and only do that which is necessary. 
That's advice, folks, that we must all heed. It's for our benefit. It's for our betterment. But here's another place of self-isolation, of confinement, that is for our spiritual good and benefit, away from everything else, that secret place, alone with God. May these days of self-isolation be days when we dwell in that secret place like never before. And finally then, there is the confidence in this place. You see, this place is not so much a place, but rather it's a person. The confidence for the psalmist is not in a particular place, but in a particular person. Folks, I would love for you to gather with us today and worship as you always do here in Sandown. The Lord's Day morning, the Lord's Day evening. But circumstances have dictated other ways. But we don't need to come to a building to meet with God. In these days of confinement and self-isolation, we can find our refuge in the person. Look how that person is described in verse number one, the most high. Another name given in the end of verse one, the almighty. What's he doing? He is considering, he is contemplating the nature of his God. And as he does so, he's at rest, he is at peace. He spends time with God in his presence, in the sacred place, time meditating, pondering on the greatness of the God that he serves. He thinks on those glorious titles of God, the most high. It speaks of his preeminence. One who's above all, one who is supreme. One who's elevated high and far above all, his preeminence. Then Almighty speaks of his power. The one who is all powerful in every situation. And God is still powerful today. He is still preeminent today. There is still nothing too hard for him. He will see us through this time of difficulty. You see, what the psalmist is doing here in a time of crisis is getting his confidence from the character and the nature of the God that he serves. He's dwelling on the character of God. It's something that we will consider in Thursday evenings in our discipleship course. And I trust you'll join with us at 8 o'clock. The study of God. Considering who God is, the Most High, the one who's above all things. The one who's above the coronavirus. The one who's above the circumstances. The one who's above the crisis. You see, the psalmist lifts himself to a place, to a person, where harm cannot affect him. He lifts himself to a place, to a person, where troubles cannot touch him. And as a result, it creates great confidence and calmness in the heart of the psalmist at a time of great difficulty. If we're going to know protection of our minds and our spiritual life in these challenging days, then we need to dwell continually on the character of God. And so he dwells, he remains, he sits, then he abides, he lodges there under the shadow of the Almighty. He abides in the nature and in the name of God the wise man said in Proverbs 18 and verse 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and save. What a blessed place the sacred place is. Throughout these incoming days, dwell there. Stay there. Abide there. Stay close to the Lord in all of this, he that dwelleth in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Let me ask you as we close this morning, is this God your God today? Is he your Saviour? Can you claim his protection and his peace? Do you know him today as your Saviour? Why not even today in the quietness of your own home? Ask Jesus into your heart to be your Savior. 
Do you want to speak to me at any time? As I've said, you do that. More than happy to speak, go through things with you. But the most important thing is that through all of this, that you might be saved. And for each one that is saved today, dwell. Dwell in the secret place like never before. And as you dwell there, abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Shadows cannot harm you. Shadows cannot affect you. Because we're sheltered under the wings of Almighty God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. May that be our experience today, tomorrow, and every day. Stay there. Abide there. To dwell there. In that place of great calmness. In that place of great confidence. Let's bow in prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank thee for this opportunity to spend time around the Word of God. Heavenly Father, we pray that you be pleased, Lord, to help us to dwell in that sacred place. And God, realize there's much concern, much anxiety. But though God, we pray you'll help us, Lord, to be close to thee in these days. Nor that being close to thee, may we hear thy voice like never before. May we hear those words of peace speak to our hearts. O oh God, we thank thee today that thou art the most high. Lord, thou art high above all of this that's going on. We thank the Lord as well that thou art almighty. Not only mighty, but almighty. O oh God, help us, O oh God, to dwell, therefore, in the nature of who our God is. Help us to consider thee. Help us, Lord, to think more and more about the God that we serve. Bless thy word to all who have listened, to all who have watched today. We ask, O oh God, today for someone maybe listening, watching, and today they are not saved, and they do not know Christ as their Saviour. Lord, we pray, save them today. Turn them to thyself. May they experience that saving grace which comes alone from thee. And having done so, that they then may go on to abide in that sacred place. Bless thy word, O God, we pray. Be with us throughout this day. Bless us, O God, again this evening as we come at half past six. O God, we pray, prepare our hearts. Help us, Lord, to pray. Continually be much in prayer throughout this day. Bless thy word. Bless all who have joined with us today and for our homes and our families. Lord, we pray that your protection and your covering be upon us all. In the Saviour's name we pray. Amen. Let me thank you today for tuning in and being a part of this live webcast. Really appreciate your presence, your support with us this morning. Don't forget, tune in again tonight, half past six, either Sermon Audio or on Facebook Live, and we'll bring another word to you tonight. We're going to look at the subject this evening of plenty of food. There's been much talk today about panic buying and shelves being empty of food. We're going to look tonight at the subject of plenty of food. And so we trust you'll join with us again. A few other things that we'll do differently uh, tonight. So join back with us again half past six uh, this evening in the will of God. Keep safe, keep well, keep close to the Lord. And may the Lord richly bless you Thank you for being with us today. God bless you and God be with you all.